Hello everyone, welcome back to Leaders Under Light 2.0. I'm Gaurav Sharma, Chief People Officer at Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages. And today, I'm genuinely excited about the conversation we are about to have. Joining us is Himanshu Priyadarshi, Chief Public Affairs and Communication Sustainability Officer at HCCB. He is not just a colleague, but a leader whose actions and decisions at HCCB inspire all of us daily. Himanshu comes from Gaya, a city that is as historic as it is spiritual. And you can really see how that has shaped who he is today. Grounded, thoughtful, and always looking beyond the horizon. He's been at the forefront of our efforts in public policy, communication, and sustainability, driving changes that aren't just good for business, but great for the world around us. In our chat today, Himanshu will share stories from his journey, the ups, the downs, and everything in between. It's going to be an open and honest look at what it means to lead with integrity, vision in today's complex corporate landscape. Himanshu, welcome to Leaders Under Light. Thank you, Gaurav. It's been a long wait. And <laughs> before we delve into your professional journey, let's start from the beginning. Let's talk about where you come from, your family, your experiences, and how have they shaped the profession that you are today? Thank you, Gaurav, for uh, giving this opportunity. And uh, I would say that I'm a big fan of uh, this Leaders Under Light because it gives you a lot of learning from the leaders, from the other leaders. Like, you know, you have conducted several sessions and uh, every leaders have a different leadership style and it gave a good message and a good learning for me also as an individual so coming to my base which is my foundation i would like to say that uh, my father has a very humble background like you know with uh, limited means and financial hardship and it's also inspiring for me that at the age of 10 years he used to tutor a child is seven years for to fund his education but after that he never he never got himself defeated and then he continued his successful journey and at that point of time he became the university topper he was a professor not a professor there wow. like you know so that has been the journey you know so to fund his education my uncle who joined uh, the army at the age of 17 to in order to fund his education and to support the fan, the family financially so after that when my father became the professor then he gave the education to my mother so my mother retired as a high school teacher she was in my phd we are four siblings so all four are masters the spouses of all fours are masters they have done my wife she has done masters in biotechnology one of my elder brother is a CEO with international beverage company based out of US. One of my sister is an entrepreneur along with a politician. And one of my sister works in the cosmetic industry. So all four siblings have done masters, you know. So I would say that in my family, the foundation, the pillars, I would say is four E's basically. One E is empowerment. Other is education. The third E is equal opportunity for everybody and the fourth is empathy because everybody was emotionally connected everybody is emotionally connected now to support the family i love the four e's that you spoke about and out of that the fourth e which is empathy is something that i connect a lot with now connecting empathy with the place historical place like gaya where you come from how has that historical city influenced your upbringing and you spoke about your humble uh, upbringing you spoke about your father and how he was able to provide education to all of you. And then you spoke about your entire family, which is very well read, which is interesting. So how can you track the background from Gaya all the way to now with humble beginnings, uh, historical place, and how does that shape the man that you are today? So Gaya is a place in eastern part of India, in, in the Bihar. And the history of Gaya is that Gaya has been the hub of Magadha Empire, which is being ruled by Chandragupta Maurya. So you have a lot of legacy figures from Bihar alone is uh, Chandragupta Maurya, Chanakya, his uh, guru, and then uh, Samrat Ashoka. So interestingly, Priyadarshi, which is like I'm known as Imanshu Shekhar Priyadarshi. 
So Pradarsi title used to be of uh, Sabrata Soka. So we, my father took this title from him and that's how all four of us are having Pradarsi and Pradarsni as the title in our family, like you know. So Gaya is also known for two other reasons. One is Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha attained his enlightenment in the Bodhi tree. So it shows a value of your inner core that what is life about, you know. And the third thing is Gaya is known for moksha, where people pay homages to their ancestors as a pindadan, like you know, which is there in Gaya. So which also tell you about the life journey from the reality is life and death. And then everything else is just to have a good life, you know, the means of living a good life. So that is the upbringing from Gaya, which has taught me the organization, which Chandkutta Maurya has built upon. The strategy, what Chanakya has built upon. The third thing is about uh, Ch Samrat Ashoka, who finally went into spirituality after winning the Kalinga War. Yeah. So that's about everything as a whole, where you learn about the life real relations and the true lessons from that hometown, which I, I belong to. So I always knew that you, you were quite well read and you are quite insightful about what's happening in the world. You are well read, you understand the history. I didn't know that you had a very strong spiritual connection too. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. So Himanshu, moving on further and talking about your formal education in environmental engineering and then an MBA, quite two powerful choices. And then I understand that you were also supporting your father in his election campaigns. So can you talk about how have you been able to traverse this entire landscape of elections to environmental engineering to MBA and now you are actually leading uh, public advocacy and uh, you are in the public eye. So how, how has all of this come together? So my father was a professor of geography, I told you, and that's how he used to represent country into various uh, international seminars. So there he got the word sustainability, like, you know, environmental geography is one of the subject. So that inspired me to do environment in 1999. And who knew that now the world will talk about environment, sustainability, decarbonization is all about the buzzword nowadays, you know. And then after that, after doing the environmental engineering, at that time my brother was doing his uh, MBA from Australia. So that's how my father used to inspire us that if you are doing a techno management degree, that will be helpful to you in a career because you'll think like a, a technical expertise and then in the management you will talk about the people management you will talk about the leadership so you learn a lot of trades in the management so that's how environmental engineering and management got clubbed in my career and before management i was also into sales so while doing my sales i used to have practice the consultative approach and in consultative approach what you do you identify the customer you maintain the relationship, you acknowledge and address the consumer concerns, and then you provide alternative in order to close the sales. So doing this consultative sales also developed a relationship uh, kind of uh, experience in yourself, in a behavioral style, where you value relationship more than just being a transactional. So after doing my MBA, I relocated back to India because uh, there is also a story to it, you know. So. Both of us were there in the US, me and my brother. And uh, my father used to hear the songs and there was a song called Chitti Aai Hai. Chitti Aai Hai, Chitti Aai Hai. Yes, very popular. So a popular song. So when my father told me that uh, both of you are in US, so why don't one of you come to India? So as I've told in the, my uh, family values, that empathy holds a ground, you know. And then my brother supported me during my financial like during my master's in business administration MBA in US. So he supported me. So now it was my turn to contribute back to the family. That's how I relocated back to India. And it was satisfying for me because I could help my father achieve. He's no more now, but he achieved the three important goals of his life. One, to do a Charta Yatra of Kedarnath Badrinath. The second, to do Pendadan, like agreeing, paying homage to his parents. And the third thing is to contest the election. He wanted to contest the election because he was a social worker, he was a politician, he was he used to lead a lot of trade associations, professor trade associations. So while doing this election campaign, it's always interesting to see the real picture, not the real on the real ground, like what's happening, you know. 
the whole terrain was used to get impacted by the natural disaster like you know the purnia and madhepura and those belt which are uh, closer to ganga gangetic Gen plains so there you would see the impact of livelihood there you will see the empowerment issues the education issues and a lot of underground issues so organizing and connecting with the voters creating a co-creation value co-creation system for them so that you can and then communicating them with what you can offer and then finally is creating a ecosystem where they would vote for you so these are all four learnings where you would only do when you understand their uh, emotions where you understand them as an individual understand their core issues and then only you can provide alternative solutions so that was a good learning for me during the selection campaign to see the real groundwork and how to influence and how to work with the masses than being individualistic. Thanks Himanshu for sharing and uh, yes you are absolutely right your career in public affairs is not by accident there's been a complete design behind it and yes. you've pretty much uh, uh, elucidated how it came into being. Thank you for sharing. Thank you Gaurav. Thank you. So now moving from your personal background to where you come from to your education to your career and you've had a long two decade career in public affairs and corporate affairs in different organizations across India and responsibility for, for much much wide portfolios as you've grown. Can you talk us through how have you been able to uh, use your education and shape the government affairs and public policy and what were some of the key challenges that you saw during your career? So, I would say that uh, being in the public policy, like I was into politics, I did prepare for the bureaucracy, you know, but being in public policy has an interesting story. It's like when I relocated back to India, I joined a leading biotech company into project management role, like a manager project, you know, and the role was to lead the vaccine project management from conceptualization to commercialization, vaccine. the complete stage. Yes, vaccine okay. industry. So, and uh, vaccines and biosimilars and other things, you know. So I was hired from the US for to lead that role. But uh, surprisingly, three events happened in 2009. One is about, because vaccine procurement industry is completely governed by the government. And the second, there was a so a huge money was outstanding in the government of India for, for past a year uh, of that company in the polio vaccine because they used to manufacture polio vaccine. Secondly, there was a swine flu outbreak and in swine flu outbreak, government gives you as an advanced marketing commitment in order to sell your products and in order to develop it like what happened in COVID vaccine also government funded your R&D and then that, that's how you scaled up, you developed and then you came out. And uh, the third thing is that Delhi elections was happening. And I was quite instrumental into the youth politics during my engineering days, during other days. So these three moments were the Eureka moment for me, which led me into public policy. And then I would be happy to say that uh, the whole money was recovered through my environmental engineering uh, education. My US education like MBA has helped me really in uh, and the project management. In, in creating the milestones at each stage and have mapping the whole stakeholders, what you learn in project management, yes. to have work built on structure, to have milestones, have the stakeholders, and then at have a deliverables, timeline, everything, you know, end to end to, have, to lead the project management one, one and a half years. So that I adopted in the procurement policy, I adopted everywhere. And that, that was the, the turning point where I came into public policy space. And when I really, I say to all my peers in the team that when your passion meets your profession, then you excel in your in your performance. Oh, wow. So when passion, profession and the performance Very is good. all interlinked. So that's how I came into this. And uh, during my stint in the public policy, I have handled multiple public policy issues. Like, you know, if we talk about the healthcare, because primarily I worked in a lot of healthcare companies lot of FMCG companies. So in healthcare, the four A's which are involved in India's uh, healthcare context is affordability, accessibility, acceptability of our drugs and the accountability. That time US FDA was talking about a lot of other things. So this four A's governs India's healthcare landscape. 
then I could get a chance to work into environmental policies on the plastic waste management rules, on the water policies, like you know, so fiscal incentives like the GST, the brown field, the green field. And also during my whole career, I traveled uh, pan India because I felt that if you want to be successful into a public policy space, then just sitting in, in center in Delhi won't help you because you have 543 member of parliaments all across and you have to work closely with them like you know at uh, several other grounds so you have so i stayed in mumbai i stayed in chennai i connected with them and that's how i have a good stakeholder uh, network which helps me navigating the public policy space because i tell my again like you know in my public policy discourse that you need to have th three things in public policy one a b c a is access to power corridors if you are not having access to policy makers and the parliamentarians then you won't be able to advocate your your argument second is b which is like build your case build your argument build your position paper and third is c which is communicate what you want so clarity of communication is very much important and that's how is a b c so with a traveling all across india i got my a done b my management and education as well and C, being into politics, being into public policy, I know what to communicate and when to communicate and how to communicate. So that's about the whole journey. So you've simplified it pretty well. And yes. I love the summation that you had, where your passion meets your profession, that's where you excel and deliver performance. Yes. So that's a nice mantra team from Himanshu. <laughs> so with the mantra which you shared about passion, profession and performance, you also spoke about ABC. Right? We did speak about access to power corridors, building your network and clarity of communication. Now getting specific into how have you helped shape policy? How do you anticipate policy changes? I know ABC helps, but then how do you prepare an organization for them? And more importantly, how do you ensure that effective government or stakeholder engagement is in place? Is it due to your project management days or do you <laughs> employ a different strategy? So I would say like, you know, uh, it's more like reading the weather mm -hmm. and your experience and your education helps in uh, and your engagement with the stakeholders helps in understanding the political environment. Like for example, post COVID, you must have seen there are a lot of changes in the whole politics of uh, the whole world. Yes. The country has, a lot of country has become protectionist. They have created their boundaries like because of the lockdown and other things. They have created those uh, boundaries themselves like you know everybody wants to develop their own indigenous uh, economy in indigenous industry in order to drive like vocal for local what we had like you know yeah. vocal for local so these reading engaging with these stakeholders gives you an insight secondly also to to keep watching all the social media what's happening in the global as well as india context on the policy shaping what's happening in your industry what are the questions being raised in the parliaments by the parliamentarians? Mm. What is happening in the draft rules or the draft regulation or the draft gadget notification? Yeah. This all helps you in gathering the insights. The second is, is connecting with the right set of stakeholders, which I would say is the trade associations. Mm -hmm. I would say the government uh, machinery. So you engage, you connect with them, you understand, build your case, build your argument about the company. You should be aware and believe in the brand. You should be aware and believe in the company and then the good things what company has been doing. So, so those things helps you drafting your communication pointers in from the stakeholders, yeah. which you communicate to them and you give them a comparative analysis of all these states and the global outlook that helps you shaping the policy. So we being in the global companies helps us gathering those information about what's happening in the US, what's happening in Europe to bring out in terms of those discussions with the stakeholders. And that's how, how like, you know, if you'll have an intelligent conversation with those intelligent mindset, because, you know, like people who are IAS and yeah. people who are bureaucrats, they are like, you know, an excellent brain and they have a different personality styles, you know. So you need to have those facts, figures, in place in order to drive it public policy. So I always say that relationships matters a lot in your engagement than just having a transactional relationship with the bureaucrats and the policymakers just to react when the issue erupts. 
it's better to have a proactive engagement with them so as to have those un insights and so as to understand the policy landscape that what is going in their mind and how you can influence those those thoughts by giving them right facts and right uh, figures so you brought the abc to life through this example yes. right and uh, you have shared a very modern view on impacting public advocacy uh, compared to the traditionalist view which was reaction yes where something happens and then you start uh, building a reaction towards it so thank thanks for you know educating us from that there is a proactive way of how you need to look at shaping public strategy yes sir So let's get to know Himanshu more as an individual today. We got to know about your upbringing, family, your values, and uh, education. Then finally, your career. Now let's understand you as a person. Uh, managing this demanding lifestyle, I'm sure there are some offsets that you have to do when you talk about family, when you talk about work-life balance. So can you give some insights into how do you do that? Because you spoke about empathy and being so close as a family person you spoke about coming back to India because your father said that I, you know, I need one of you here. So as a father yourself, how do you balance work life? So I would say like uh, the whole credit goes to my wife because wife makes the whole like you know the apartment as a home. Mm. So she wherever we have kept changing the apartments but the home remains the same. So I am blessed with uh, two boys, one is 17, other is uh, seven, 12. So I'm more become a cool dad at home and give them a more relaxed and a released atmosphere. Because you know, the world has evolved a lot and there are multiple choices. And life is having a definite value. And I always say like, you know, being from the pharmaceutical space, that failures are, should be treated as a trial batches or a validation batches instead of a commercial batches. Mm -hmm. So failures helps you. So I keep on saying, telling my boys like, you know, that uh, life is a journey. We don't know about the destination. And that's what I keep on telling my boys that that keep on doing a hard work, do your efforts well, but don't worry about the conclusion or the decision or what's happening. Like, you know, nothing will fall. Mm. Nothing will fall. In 80, 90 years of your life, 20, 25, 30 years, you have spent time in education and the rest 30 years, you are is working life and the rest 20 years is retirement life. So why to worry for a lot? You know, life is short. Make it sweet or sad is all up to us. So with this, I keep on giving them a relaxed environment, relaxed uh, and a released conversation so that they don't get pressurized with me. And uh, weekends I spend time with them. I take them for a frequent vacations, small, small, short vacations because that holds you strong. So if you want to give any message to your wife, she's hearing this, anything you want to tell her? No, no, she is very loving. She is very caring and I really respect her for all the things what she has been bearing with me. So thank you very much. Very good. Moving on quickly, changing gears and talking about your hobbies. Uh, how do you, I know that you like playing cricket, golf and chess. So how do these activities help you to unwind? And how uh, do these influence your professional life in any way? Cricket teaches you a lot of things like, you know, from, from beginning, like, you know, from in Bihar, we used to, we, we used not to have too many uh, games like you know and cricket has been one of the things like you know from 1983 till now like cricket has been one of the major sports in India. Yeah. So and in cricket uh, it gives you two learnings. One is T20 match and the other is test matches. T20 gives you the speed of execution. T20 helps you like how to be situational, how to play situational leadership role while playing it you know and then you have to hit runs. So you have to be aggressive. Whereas test matches gives you a learning about how to be patient, how to defend yourself, how to hold the ground, like, you know, along with making the runs. So you have to be more pragmatic in your approach when you are playing test crickets. So these two matches helps me having some understanding, the style, like, you know, everybody is an individual, everybody has uh, having a different style. Some are batsmen, some are ballers, some are wicket keepers, some are different, different uh, people there, like, you know, in the whole cricket yeah. ground. So you need to learn about different traits and that's how when you work with a team, you have different, different team members also. Some are wicket keepers, some are batsmen, some are opening batsmen, some are ballers, you know. So you have to work with different set of people and together you have to win as a team in a cricket world. 
and similarly if you talk about the other sports which i play is golf mm -hmm. and uh, chess chess is all about strategy and that's what i have been telling my team like you know i love to play the 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 game of horse rather than just playing the game of pawn <laughs> so begin horse you have to have you to have to go to and a half times then just going to the pawn with a single step you know mm. so so this helps me a lot like you know in uh, in understanding the whole game familiarizing them and developing the skills like nobody is perfect in the games everybody has to keep on polishing themselves brushing themselves doing the hard efforts in order to be successful so you know chunking it up a bit uh, who are some of the mentors or idols or professionals that you held in high regards and who shaped the way you are and can you talk about what inspiration you've drawn from them at the same time for a lot of people who are viewing this today uh, who are aspiring to lead a career in public affairs and you know intersect public policy with sustainability any advice you can provide to them as they think about their careers or as they start building their careers from your experience if you talk about the inspiration since i am lucky i would say myself lucky that being into public policy role it's an issue in india and you get a chance to work closely with the board and with the ceos yes. so and every ceos have their different style one of my past ceos was having a style of giving a personalized message to individuals in order to recognize his individual efforts that used to bring him connecting with the with the people like with the employee you know so so there you learn about how well you can connect at that level also individually with your team few of the other ceos has been very good in uh, in their strategic thinking in having those long term vision for the organization 3 years 5 years down the line and uh, and working on ground working with the sales team working with them in order to develop their capabilities so every leader is an inspiration for me and every individual is an inspiration for me because every individual i deal with near about like you know i would say but on an average being from the sales uh, sales work life where we see that we say that there should be eight calls in a day so having eight meetings per day turns out to be meeting with so many individuals in the whole journey and every individuals are having their own individual values individual system individual culture and individual thought process mm -hmm. so every so you have to pick and choose that what you want that to be with you you know like from you i have learned a good smiling <laughs> from alok i have learned to be patience from lobo i have learned to be have that aggression so everybody is having their own individual style to inspire you and i get inspired by individual by, by everybody like you know i would say and uh, for the team like you know who is uh, listening to this conversation the public policy professional i would say from my experience public policy is all about four p's one p is having that policy analysis and policy insight the second p is partnership partnership involves partnership with the stakeholders partnership with the community and partnership with the investor the third p is people management people means your team your leader your subordinates your every everybody who is there in the company and your stakeholders whom do you see as the people p you know and the fourth p is all about bringing profitability to the organization and bring bringing productivity to the organization and that's how if we have want like public policy has been treated as an enabler function in multiple organization but in order to turn out from enabler to core you need to follow this four p's so as to think from the pnl point of view that how well whatever you are doing what is the return on investment of that action will help you driving public policy in a more secured way and in a more successful way many regard hcb as a great place to work so according to you what makes this a great employer so we we work with a purpose is to refresh the world and make a difference and we try to build a a socially equitable environment as a company to the community to the environment where we work in in terms of the the culture and in terms of doing the action because it is not about how we do it it's all about what we do it when to when we do it so approach matters the people matters and everybody is has a collective responsibility in this organization to drive it into a successful journey you know so hcb 
is truly in that sense to have to have that core value the leaders who are in hscb they all work towards the company success towards the employee success and the employee well being so we try to build an inclusive environment not only deliverables we try to build an inclusive environment for our employees mm -hmm. as well as the community from where, community with whom we work in mm -hmm. for example i would say that we are also leading in the space of sustainability because we are 100% extended producer responsibility company where we fully ful we fulfill the plastic waste management rules and we have a journey where whatever water we consume we try to recharge more than that so it's yeah. more like a inclusive environment what we build when in terms of water replenishment project i would be happy to share again about the csr effort corporate social responsibility efforts which we have done in hccb is is working on the women empowerment programs like 25000 women we train into financial literacy and digital education 25000 youth we train into skill and development like you know into sales and marketing skills so that they get employable with any fmcg company so that's again a big target what we could able to accomplish last year the third in you know, on the access roads to safe drinking water working on the village information centers working in the cluster development approach working on environment management so i truly believe that the values what we have the pillars of hccb what we have is what have we have been doing we have been acting on ground in order to have a socially equitable environment for everybody to live in that's very powerful socially equitable environment for the community where we work in So Himanshu, we are coming a full circle. Uh, we spoke about your background, we spoke about your education, spoke about your career, spoke about inspiration, and you gave some amazing nuggets for professionals who are not only in public affairs, but also folks who are into project management and in industry. And now, as we are coming towards the end, the final section, you know, yes. is rapid fire, yes. wherein we will shoot questions. And you will need to answer with the first thought that comes to your mind. Yes. Are you good to go? Yes, yes. Ready? Yes. All right. First question. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Okay. Favorite book? Uh, I have a couple of books. One is uh, Miracles That Happen by Brian West. Uh, most used, used app on your phone, not WhatsApp. Oh, I use Twitter then. Twitter? <laughs> All right. X. Yes, X. Okay. X. Uh, last movie you saw? 12th film. Well, yeah, yeah, because fortunately that uh, the official is also known to me. He's a good oh. friend of mine. So, so 12th Vale was an inspiring movie. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Dream vacation destination? Uh, I've been to Switzerland. So that's only one of the favorite destination, I would say. Oh, so you've been to your dream vacation? Yes. yes, yes. Interesting. Favorite cuisine? Yeah, obviously Indian, like being Bihari. I love Liti Chokha, you know. Liti Chokha. Yes. <laughs> Do you cook? I... Don't, but I can cook shokha though, but I cannot cook liti. Okay, <laughs> all right. If you can have dinner with one person, uh, fictional or real, who would that be? I always respected uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri ji, because uh, he was a notable politician, like, you know, who was humble, who was hard in his actions. So I always respected and admired him. Best piece of advice that you remember? I would quote like you know the tagline from Bajpeji, Adalvir Bajpeji, which I practice in my own individual lifestyle, is "Har nahi manunga, rar nahi thanunga, kal ke kapal pe likhta hu mitata hu, geet naya gata hu, geet naya gata hu." So which means that he won't get defeated, and you won't be into a conflicting situation with anybody else, but you don't accept the failure also. And every moment and then, you try to create a new song. You try to create a new rhyme. So don't take failure. Don't argue with anybody. But, and don't accept the failure. Means you create a new song altogether. Very good. So that he has said and that, that has uh, touched me well. Which I always use it for my self-motivation. Right. And on that note, the last question, which is your, which is your favorite beverage? Beverage is thumbs up. Like, you know, because we have grown with with thumbs up taste the thunder so on that note uh, big thumbs up to himanshu
for sharing his thoughts openly about his background, beliefs, and more interestingly, the values and the acronyms that he shared with us, the nuggets for all of us. I'm sure a lot of people will drive value from that. Thank you once again, Himanshu, for joining us today. And we had an amazing session with you. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity.